Hey everyone, it's Cynthia Ray here. I'm just getting my things set up, making sure that I have everything in place. See one sec here. Let's see. Here hey everyone, go. it's Cynthia Ray here. I'm just getting my things set up, making sure that I have everything in place. Okay, give me one sec. And welcome, I share my screen with you all. Actually not quite yet. Let me close this. Okay, welcome. And today is another episode of our Thursday Live here on our Facebook group, the Intuitive Wellness Community. And I am Cynthia Ray. I'm a registered dietitian and fitness specialist. I've been in private practice for a little over 20 years now um, in Southern California and now I'm up here in North Idaho and um, I'm changing things around. I'm no longer in private practice, but am a virtual wellness coach, dietitian, fitness coach, uh, motivator, inspirer, whatever you want to call it. So I just want to welcome you today and um, today's going to be my sixth, seventh, I don't even know, lost track of how many uh, Thursday lives I've done, done so far. And if you want to go back and see previous uh, recorded Thursday lives, you can go on my YouTube page and um, I'll share the link to that. It's under, if you go to YouTube, it's under Well Within Inc, I-N-C. And you can see all of the recorded ones there. This will also be up um, again later uh, today, probably afterwards, after our class time today, um, it'll be up live on the Facebook group and then I'll share it via email to all of my email group. And if you want to receive it via email, just uh, message me with your email address and I could add you to my email um, newsletter. So anyway, welcome again. And um, like I said, my name is Cynthia Ray. I'm excited to be here. I love the concept of intuitive wellness. I don't know if any of you have ever uh, heard of that. It's kind of common these days when I first heard about it, when was it maybe 25 years ago? It's been a while now. Um, it was very new to me. It was something that I really never understood. It honestly wasn't even on my radar. I was in my early 20s. And at that time, just to give you a little history, um, between starting around 15 years old to my early 20s, I struggled with eating disorders and I just had an issue with food distrust. I didn't trust my body. I didn't trust the food that went into it. I had a lot of fear of certain foods that would make me fat. Um, and in my mind, fat meant unacceptable, unlovable, imperfect, and really didn't, uh, I guess a loss of self-worth and value, which sounds strange, but which is true. Um, and some of you may be able to relate to this um, just in our culture and society. Um, let me turn off my volume here. Uh, within our culture and society, that's common. And we get a lot of value and um, affirmation from how we look, how we, how we are perceived by others, um, whether it's our fitness, our body shape and size, how much self-control we have around food. Those things are praised in our culture. And I learned that growing up and decided that, you know, the less I eat, the better that is because it's praiseworthy and people give you accolades for eating really healthfully and wow, I wish I could do that. You're amazing. Kind of putting you on a pedestal, but which makes it very, very challenging to keep up because that's not something that is normal and natural and you shouldn't be able to keep that up forever. Of course, it's great and ideal to eat as healthfully and as much whole food, whole food nutrition as possible, fruits and veggies and unprocessed uh, foods. But do that 100% of the time in our culture um, is impossible. And we should enjoy a variety of foods. Like a lot of dietitians say, all foods fit, which is true. So um, every type of food fits in our diet. Mostly I always uh, recommend about 80% uh, whole food, healthy food and about 20% fun food. So just to give you an idea, but anyway, don't want to get too, too much of a bunny trail on that one. But so today I'm going to be discussing a topic that's near and dear to my heart, um, an intuitive type thing and, and uh, something that talks about listening to our bodies and being mindful. 
But last time I talked about intuitive and, mind and mindful eating, but today I want to talk about the concept of intuitive exercise or movement. So have any of you heard of the concept of intuitive movement? If you're watching live, I want you to comment in the comment section. This is an interactive class. So I'm gonna be asking questions as we go, but please comment if you're watching this live or recorded, I'll check it later on. If you, have you ever heard of the concept of intuitive exercise? Um, yes or no? So we'll start there. Okay, I'll wait a minute. I'm just gonna jump on my uh, phone here so I can see who's here live because I can't see otherwise from my computer. Let's see here. There we go. All right, so let me see if I can see who's here. Oh, hey, Jeanette. How's it going? I'm going to turn down my volume here so I'm not having some uh, feedback from my phone. But welcome. And so you haven't heard of it. So a lot of people haven't. It's kind of a newer concept, but you are about to learn something new and amazing. So anyhow, so intuitive exercise is essentially being intuitive about your exercise. <laughs> so before we move into that, let me describe what intuitive actually means. So I actually have a definition here. It's the intuition is the ability to understand something immediately without need for conscious reasoning. So if you think about that, you may think of times in your life where you have experienced intuition or an in intuitive nature, an intuitive moment where you're not contemplating an idea or concept, but it just kind of comes in your mind and it gives you in your gut, truly our gut is our second brain, a strong feeling about something. So I know as moms, we can have a really strong mom gut intuition about me, what may be happening um, with our kids, hey Jeanette, <laughs> um, what may be happening with our kids in a moment or not with them. Um, we may know in advance, uh, you know, I remember actually about when I was pregnant with my kids, we didn't find out the gender, but something inside me <laughs> truly <laughs> um, knew what the gender of the child is. And sometimes what we do too is we'll know, we'll have an intuitive feeling or gut feeling, but we don't want to go with it because it's something we don't want in our lives in particular or to know or understand, although it is the truth. And we do other, th we start to overthink something because we don't want it to be that way. So we counteract ourselves with um, conscious reasoning and we end up missing out on, on situations in life. If um, let's say your gut is telling you something to do, is telling you to do something in particular, but you're like, oh, I'm afraid to do it. But you don't do it. And then you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, I totally should, I totally should have done that. I knew that's what it was. Or even like when you're doing a taking a test um, and you have a multiple choice, you know, test and you're thinking, I know that's that's the answer. The first one you see, and then you start second guessing yourself because you see other ones that could also be a possibility. So uh, and then you 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 know mark down another option that you use conscious reasoning for and then you go back and you're like oh my gosh I totally almost marked that answer but I didn't and I got it wrong so those are some concepts of intuition or even like the, my last example is um, when you're driving and you see a green light and you know for somehow some way that you know it's about to turn yellow and then it does and then red or you know it's going to be green you're like okay stay green stay green so you can get through the light <laughs> and it does so that's kind of our another uh, form of intuition. So those are kind of fun ideas. Um, so as far as intuitive exercise goes, you know what, let me go, I have some slides for you all. Let me share those with you as we go through, as we dive into intuitive exercise here. Let me see if I can share my screen. There we go. Okay, so let me open up the slides for you. All right, here we go. All right, so intuitive exercise or movement, it's fitness for longevity. So, which I'm gonna talk about next. So we talked about what intuition is, and now let's talk about how intuition applies to exercise. So when it comes to exercise, it's really following your intuition 
about what type of exercise that you need to do in that moment or that day. So although you're, you know, maybe you have a workout scheduled for that day or planned in the back of your mind, or you have a class that you want to go to that day because that's a regular, you know, Thursday class, um, but it happens to be a yoga class. And that afternoon you're like, oh man, I really have a lot of energy today. I feel really good. I feel like I can conquer something a little bit more challenging. Um, that's your intuition. Your body is telling you exactly what you need for that moment or what kind of energy you have for that day. So you can do something else for your exercise and honor your body, or you can do the yoga and feel like that felt good, but I definitely feel like I need more. Or just the opposite could occur. It could be where you feel like, oh man, I have that hard um, boot camp class today. And man, I just don't have the energy for it. I'd much, I feel, it would just feel so good to do yoga today. And it could be mental energy or physical energy that is lacking or elevated, depending on how you're feeling, then switch it out. You totally have permission to do that, to switch out your um, hard boot camp workout and instead do your yoga class and really benefit from that because your body is saying, this is what I need right now. And um, I want you to honor that. So sometimes the difficulty with intuitive exercise, well, many times actually, the difficulty with intuitive exercise is that we feel like we know what we're supposed to be doing or what we should be doing. And what maybe we're supposed to be doing is that hard boot camp class because I want to get results and I want to get stronger, or I'm committed to it because I told somebody I was going, or I committed to it because my coach is planning on having me there and so on. But when we dishonor our exercise or movement intuition, it, we actually get burned out so much more quickly. But if we honor it, you're able to continue your exercise for the long haul and feel good. So do you see the difference? So I know for me uh, personally, I've, you know, before when I was struggling with my eating issues and exercise addiction, my intuition was not even a factor. It was what I felt like I needed to do or I was supposed to do that was in the forefront of my mind. I planned a hard workout. I'm going to do a hard workout no matter how I feel while I'm doing it. And I remember many times feeling horrible, having horrible energy, but pushing in my mind to push my body. Actually, I ended up injuring myself a couple of times because of not listening to my body. And because I had an excess addiction, I was moving it to the next level. And although I was injured, I still did it anyway, because my mind and my heart was telling me to um, in more of an abusive way, which I know isn't necessarily the case for everybody, but I know we felt that at some level, like we're exercising because we're supposed to do this workout today, or I should be, we're doing this workout today, or I feel like I need to be because I need to get results or I'm punishing myself for eating not as helpfully as I want to be. <laughs> so intuitive exercise is just like intuitive eating, going with your body's flow. And that in itself is going to produce exercise or fitness longevity for the long haul. And be like one of those elderly ladies you see playing tennis, going hiking, going for walks with her girlfriends and having lots of energy. If you're gonna push hard and hit hard now, you're not gonna have much longevity and you're gonna be hurting later. So listening to your body is key. All right. So let's talk about your why. Why is it that you are doing what you do, whether or not you are exercising or whether you are exercising, what is your why? Why is exercise important to you? What is it about it that is necessary for you personally? Why is it necessary for you personally in your life at this moment? What is your exercise or movement why? So if you're watching live, go ahead and feel free, or if you're watching uh, recorded, feel free to share right now your exercise or fitness, why? Why is it important to you? And I'll give you a few moments to do that. I'm actually gonna turn off my uh, little screen up here if I can. I don't know if you can see me or not. All right, so take a moment to do that and we'll come back.
Okay, because it looks like it's not closing. Okay. Not sure how to take my face off of this screen. Okay, no big deal. So what is your exercise why? And go ahead and take a moment to comment with that. Why is it important to you? Okay, just trying to figure out how to get my face off of here. Okay, no big deal. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. So once you think about your why, you can share it there later. Also, what are your current exercise goals? Why, why do you do what you do? What's your goal? Why, why do you choose exercise? Even if you're not exercising regularly right now, what is it that you um, want to get out of regular exercise? So go ahead and share that. Also, if you're watching recorded or live, I will wait a couple of minutes for responses. Okay, thanks for sharing, Jeanette. So I just says here, we have some extra added stress with our son who was struggling at school, which was negatively impacting me emotionally. I decided that having or making time for myself was important and exercising would potentially help improve my mental health. That is so true. That's a great why. <laughs> um, life comes at us and exercise is the ideal way to limit or eliminate or cope with stress in our lives for sure. So awesome, Jeanette, that looks great. Very good. So you're gonna notice if you haven't already how much of an impact that may have had on you and your, um, just, just not on you at the moment, but also just your clarity of mind in general. I know sometimes, many times when I'm exercising, I find that my mind is so much more clear and rational and I have these really amazing creative thoughts. <laughs> so I try to capture those when I can, but thank you for sharing that. All right, and then if we have any exercise goals, I want to share those, which could actually also be a goal as well. But many times we might find that your why is very strong when it's related to something very personal, whether it's your family, um, your personal health, your longevity, that kind of a why is what's going to keep you going for the long haul. But usually if it's just something that's, uh, I want to lose weight, I want to get strong, those ones don't usually keep you going forward when you fall off, but something that's very personal to you and very important to you, when you remember it, when you're having moments of um, weakness or just not wanting to exercise or whatever, um, keep you going. So remember those. All right, make sure your why is something significant. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so now let's talk about intuitive movement. So I'm just gonna go through a little sheet I have with you here, if you don't mind. Actually, now I'm gonna uh, go back on this slide for a sec here. Okay, so intuitive exercise or movement is also um, a practice of connecting and listening to your body to figure out how it feels and what type of movement it needs that day. It's like I told you before, it's very much about how you feel in the moment and that day and acknowledging that. Instead of picking what type of exercise you think you should do, you use your body's internal cues to figure out the best type, length, and intensity of your workout. So using your body as the guide. And even while you start exercising, let's say you've 
chosen whatever it is you wanted to do. And you're like, wow, I feel really good. I thought I didn't have as much energy today. So maybe if I'm doing yoga right now, I'm just going to pick up my intensity and do my yoga practice or just stop and change it up and maybe go for a run instead. Do something that gives you more energy or, or provides you with the, um, to use whatever amount of energy you have in the moment and change up your workout to use that energy. Okay. Intuitive exercise also means that you are choosing to move your body for the sake of self-care or health benefits instead of the calorie burn. So it's very much a wellness approach to exercise. So you're exercising for the long-term benefits, not just for the here and now, but because it feels good, because eventually you are going to look pretty good. <laughs> and feel good overall. You're going to, if you do something consistently, whether whatever time of exercise you do, you're going to see a result. Um, but like I said before, in our breaking plateaus video is you have to change out your workouts every four to six weeks to consistently see a goal and see change. If you're plateauing in your exercise, it's because you haven't, you've been doing the same thing over and over again and not seeing results anymore. So it's key to change things up regularly. All right. So to get started with intuitive movement, ask yourself questions like, these are great questions. What does my body need today? So stop and think before you exercise. What does my body need today? What type of movement do I feel like doing? What type of exercise would be most beneficial to my body today, today in this moment and be beneficial? Some days this may mean that you do an intense spin class, while other days it may mean restorative yoga or a short walk. Intuitive movement is flexible, not rigid, and gives you the space to explore what feels good in your body. So I'm going to give you share a little story with you all, which I thought was really neat last night. I, I uh, realized this. So my, my son, he's 12 years old. He plays baseball. Um, he's pretty serious about baseball. He loves his baseball, but um, it's not so serious that it's not fun. He absolutely loves it. So they're on a break this week and he plays year round baseball. They're on a break this week between seasons, sessions, between winter and spring. And he usually practices baseball at least three times a week. Do they, they do conditioning and hitting and throwing and pitching and all that stuff throughout the week, three days a week. And I completely forgot, but he hasn't been working out this week because they're off. And yesterday I went to go do my workout in the afternoon I said, okay, Campbell, I'm going to go do my workout. And he said, okay. He's like, I think I want to do a workout too. I'm like, okay. He said, yeah, I remember, I'm remembering about how coach told us that on days when we're off to see if we can get a little workout in ourselves. And he said, I've been, I forgot that I was supposed to be doing that during the regular week. And I just remembered, cause I really felt like I wanted to move. I thought, oh, that is really cool. So I actually invited him to participate in my workout with me that I was doing, but he's like, you know what, mom, it's not the same thing. I said, well, I'm going to be doing a pretty hard cardio workout. I have a lot of energy right now and you're welcome to join me. It's only 30 minutes. We'll have fun together. And he's like, you know what, mom, I don't really feel like doing that right now. I really want to do some more sports specific stuff, meaning, and he said, actually, you know, something that's more like baseball. I want to do some practice swings and I want to um, do some lunging lunges and squatting and some uh, sprinting, things like that. That's what we do in practice. And it's more specific to my sport. So I thought, okay, that's pretty cool. You do that. I'm going to do my thing. And when we were done, we both felt really good. We have a ton of energy. We felt accomplished and that we really honored our bodies was amazing. So kids are so intuitive with food, with sleep, with um, movement. Um, and so it's really great when you can see your, your children doing that, but also if you're intuitive, they're going to mimic you as well. So you can be a great example for your children. Um, of intuitive exercise so that you can have a lifestyle of wellness and fitness for a long, long time. So I thought that was a kind of a fun story from yesterday. All right. So instead of exercising to burn calories or lose weight, it's about exercising because of the positive health and the mood benefits. So instead of forcing yourself to do X days of cardio and X days of weight training, you get to explore the movement that feels good in your body. You know, it's interesting as I say that, I know it can be kind of scary to do that. It can feel really scary to start letting your body be in control of what you do 
when we're not used to doing that, because we're going to think, oh man, if I let my body tell me and dictate what I wanted to do, I would never do anything. <laughs> I wouldn't start back, start exercising and I wouldn't, um, I would be scared too, because if my boot camp workout is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and, and I've committed to doing that, and my goal is to lose weight by X and X day, if I don't allow, if I don't commit to that and do that, I'm not going to reach my goal. So it's really challenging at first, but honestly, you're going to notice a benefit in the long haul when you have short lived uh, goals, short term goals, and you're going to hit hard, hit your workouts hard, no matter how you feel, you're going to come out on the other side, either injured or burned out. <laughs> so if you want to be fit and healthy as a part of your lifestyle, intuitive eating is a must. It's what you need to do as your form of exercise regularly. Okay. All right. So shifting your mindset allows exercise to become more enjoyable, less stressful, and ends up being something to look forward to rather than dreaded. How much more fun is it to do a yoga workout when you feel like you want to do a yoga workout? And how good does it feel when you have lots of energy or you want to gain more energy and you do a fun, high energy um, workout? There's nothing better than matching up your intuitive nature with the actual exercise that you choose to do. So trust me on this. <laughs> I've done this myself and it took me a lot of time to trust my body, but I was committed to healing myself mentally, emotionally, and physically, and listening to how I felt. And once I allowed that to happen, there was so much freedom. I felt so good. My energy was so much better. Um, my uh, availability to my children and my spouse was so much better because I wasn't stressed out about my workouts. I was actually enjoying them and it was growing me, not breaking me down. So just want to encourage you in that, which actually this uh, concept of intuitive exercise is actually what got me to my recovery. So coming from an, becoming an, being an exercise addict and athlete growing up and into a complete intuitive exerciser, I've, I am still fit. I'm still strong. I'm still can, capable of doing a lot of stuff. Um, I could probably outrun um, out cardio a lot, a lot of people, but I'm still intuitive. I'm still listening to my body. I feel like I'm in really great shape. Although sometimes I want to do yoga. Sometimes I want to just stretch. Sometimes I don't want to do anything. Sometimes I want to work really hard and I do. And honoring my body has been the best thing because I've been able to avoid injury. Or if I do have any kind of injury, I'm listening to my body and um, taking it easy. So just want to encourage you in that. All right, so let's talk about the benefits of intuitive movement. I've talked to you about several of them as far as like everyday practicality, um, but here's just some of the science, science related ones. Um, you can kind of look through this list here, but you know, it's interesting looking at this list when you're exercising intuitively, these are the amazing things that can happen to you, right? A lot of us have experienced these things. Increased energy is like the first one you'll, you'll see right away. Um, better balance and flexibility, increased memory clarity, reduction in chronic pain, mood, great mood, increased energy, great sleep, all those things. Um, on the other side of this coin though, if you continue to not honor your body, whether it's um, not to exercise at all or to work hard when your body's not asking for it or to not work hard because you're afraid to, even when you have energy, you're gonna notice the opposite happening with these things, right? So I know when I was exercising excessively, my sleep was terrible, my stress was higher, my mood was always off, I was depressed or angry. Um, bone density actually decreases because of lack of nutrients and overexercise. Um, my muscle mass was actually depleting because I was working my body too hard. Um, my energy and flex, my ba balance and flexibility was not there. I um, actually had an increased risk of heart disease and um, of type two diabetes and high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and actually did have high cholesterol when I was eating not very much and exercising a lot because of all the stress in my body. Um, my memory and mental clarity was out the window. I don't know how I got through college. <laughs> uh, and chronic pain was a part of my life. <laughs> so it's crazy to think, you know, you can decide and everything that I educate you on 
um, is a decision. Everybody gets to make a choice for wellness. And um, thanks, Jeanette. I'll see you later. Bye. Um, everything that you do is a decision for wellness or not, as far as what I'm talking about in these classes. So you can choose to have wellness for longevity. You can have a short-term goal, which will lead to um, short-term results, um, or do nothing at all. So you get to decide. Here are the benefits I'm sharing with you of intuitive exercise. If you want to do this for a long time and still be really fit and be the best you, or you can also not listen to your body and have short-term results and injury. <laughs> so you get to decide. I just want to let you know that it's up to you. All right, let's put this into practice. Okay, I'm going to go ahead here a little bit. All right, so here's a few things that you can do to become more mindful about what type of exercise your body wants to do. So before I dive into this, um, just kind of ignore this for a second. Before I dive into this, um, we're gonna finish up actually here. Um, you want to, I'm gonna give you some other steps actually that I use personally. These are some things that I found online, but I wanna tell you the steps I use personally, what I would recommend. Um, the first thing is if you're not exactly sure what it means to be intuitive or how to even know what your body wants, you won't know how to do this. <laughs> so let's start backwards a little bit. I wanna teach you about how to be mindful about your body, mindful about what you need. Be being mindful means being aware and listening to what your body's asking for. So if you're not sure how to be mindful or know what exercise your body's asking for or not asking for, the best thing to do is take a week and try different types of workouts. Maybe one day try yoga, one day walking, one day running, one day um, hiking, one day biking, um, one day doing workouts at home, one time doing workouts at the gym, and a variety of things. And kind of, and each time you do that workout, note how you feel. Note how you feel before you do it. Note how you feel after you do it. And then see what it is that stands out to you. Today I felt really good when I did yoga or yesterday I, I um, did my boot camp class and today my energy is really low. Um, soreness is one thing that's gonna be normal, but we're talking about like physical energy and um, what matches your body's need at the moment. Um, I was really sore today, but I decided to do my weight workout anyway. Now I feel worse <laughs> or my energy wasn't there. Maybe next time I'll do yoga or stretching or take a day off. So just maybe take a week and try different types of exercise, different locations. Maybe, you know, definitely start out with the type of exercise that you enjoy and see how you feel. And just start to be mindful of how you feel before, during, and after your exercise. And have those notes, you know, kind of journal them. And then from there, you can check to see what your notes say and the exercises that felt the best to you in that moment do them, those particular ones, the next week and see how you're feeling. So just start practicing being mindful. And then the more you do that, the more you're going to notice um, that you are aware of your intuitive nature, that you know exactly what you need to do for yourself when and what feels best at what time. So that's just a way to get you started. But um, what I have found here, I'm just gonna go through these here on my slide here. Um, number one, do a quick body scan. This is once you have become intuitive and know what it means. So the, a good way to start is just doing a body scan. Check, to, check in with yourself. How are you feeling? And then um, you can just start moving and see how you feel. Like I said, start moving, do something, see how you feel. Number two, avoid rigid structure and the all or nothing thinking. So which is so easy for us to fall into, but being more um, flexible uh, with your workouts and um, seeing what feels good when. Choose a form of movement, movement or exercise that you enjoy. Of course, it absolutely has to be something you enjoy. Don't try to do a workout that your friend's doing because you got good results. You could try it, but don't expect the same thing all the time because you're different people and maybe have different um, likes or dislikes. So you can try it with an open mind and open heart and see how you like it. If you didn't absolutely love it, then forget it. Maybe put it on the shelf and try to get another time or, um, and try something else. Uh, pay attention to how the movement makes you feel. We talked about that. 
So while you're doing the exercise, pay attention and kind of check in with yourself throughout the workout, see how you're feeling. Um, do not be afraid of rest days. Looks like I'm missing some numbers there. Um, do not be afraid of rest days. Use those to recover so that you can get back in it again. Um, many athletes, professional and not, are very aware of the importance of rest days. They're, they're, just, they're just as important as the workout days for recovery so that you can gain strength. If you're working out all the time, you're gonna break your body down and you're not gonna get the results that you want from your workout. And also gonna get burned out emotionally and physically and mentally. <laughs> so number seven, this I like this one, invest in comfortable clothing. It's so nice to work out in clothes that you feel good in clothes that make you feel confident and comfortable and at ease. If you have something that's too small or too tight, that's gonna take all your attention away from doing your workout and enjoying your time. But make sure to dress comfortably in what feels good to you. You don't wanna wear something that feels uncomfortable, whether you feel like people are looking at you or it's something that you're not used to wearing. Um, wear something that's comfortable. And so that way you can keep your focus on your workout and not you know, your shirt riding up or your pants falling down <laughs> or anything like that. Um, and uh, something that you're not, that's not too loose or baggy either so you don't get tangled up in it. So um, it's always fun to invest in a nice cute workout outfit as a motivator and also a nice little water bottle. Sometimes just the little accessories you have during your workout and for your workout are motivating to want to do it. And also good music. I love putting on some fun music that makes you want um, to do more and enjoy your exercise. So. Those are just some things to get started with. All right, so just to kind of finish this off, I wanna ask you a few questions that you can comment on. I'll give you a moment to comment. What do you want out of exercise? I know we just talked about some new concepts, but from what you've learned, what do you feel like your why is at this point? What do you ultimately want? And like I said before, you get to decide. It's not about people pleasing or anything like that. It's about doing what you need to do for you in the moment, whether that's, you know, keep continuing to work really hard and, and um, bust out some really tough workouts because you feel like you need to, or whether it's being intuitive, whether it's do nothing at all. Um, what is your why for whatever you decide to do? And what do you ultimately want? Is what you're doing matching what you ultimately want? So like I said, you get to decide. So take a couple minutes or take a minute or so to comment what it is that you really want. So I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, so as you contemplate that and write some things down, I just wanna let you know that the best thing to do to start is to start. <laughs> Makes sense, right? So start with something. Start with thinking about what workouts you really like. Think about if the workout you're doing right now is really, really what you like and makes you excited to go to. If it's not, don't do it, stop doing it. This is for you, not for anybody else, okay? Find what it is that you love. Try a few different things. I love, for me, I used to be a gym goer for years. I used to love going to the gym. Um, I worked at gyms. I taught classes in gyms, uh, fitness classes. I taught spinning. I taught um, cross conditioning classes, pretty much everything but yoga. <laughs> um, and then I fell in love with home fitness. I love doing my beach body on demand workouts with my Beachbody app and on the website and on my TV and whatever, I totally fell in love with that and I'm hooked. Um, now for me, going to the gym is a chore. I don't like the idea of going to the gym because I'm so spoiled with getting my workouts done at home, 30 minutes or less, hard hitting workout, lots of fun, get in the shower, don't worry, have to about, don't worry, have to, about, excuse me, don't worry, don't have to worry about dropping my kids off in childcare, finding them something to do or leaving the house. However, I know that there is a time for that. And there's sometimes when I do want to go with a frontier workout. Um, 
So find what it is that you love. See if what you're doing currently is what you really enjoy. And if not, do something else. So just want to thank you for being here today and learning a little bit about what intuitive exercise is. So during your next work workout, your homework is to check in with your body, check in, check in with yourself before you start, check in with yourself during the workout, how you're feeling, check in with yourself after, how was it? Did you enjoy it? Was it hard? Was it too easy? Can I push harder next time? Can I do a little bit less next time to feel better? And just be intuitive and mindful, be very mindful about your exercise and plan it out. If you don't know exactly what to do to start, think about what you love to do. If you need more resources and maybe some more ideas of what types of exercises to do, you can join me and my intuitive wellness community if you're not here already. And I'm, I'm always giving tips and ideas and um, answering questions about what to do for exercise if you're not sure where to get started. So just want to in, uh, invite you to that. And I will talk to you all soon. If not next Thursday, I know I have another class coming up the Thursday after that. Have a fantastic Thursday. Talk to you all soon. Bye.